All right, we are at the overdrive right now. This is a D-type overdrive. Uh, it's out of the Triumph Spitfire box that I was rebuilding in my other video. But you can have actually a number of cars that all use this same type of overdrive. Uh, might be on some Volvos, some even some exotic stuff, honestly, a uh, number of Triumphs. So uh, that's a pretty common unit, and regardless of which car you have, the procedure for overhauling it is going to be, should be pretty much the same. Uh, so first thing we want to do is get rid of this solenoid because parts of it are a little bit delicate and I can almost promise you I will break it by accident so I'm just going to unscrew this and take that off to begin with Technically, you could leave this piece in if you're happy with the way that it was adjusted before. I'm going to be cleaning everything, so I kind of want to get it out of the way. But as a bonus, we'll get to see the adjustment procedure too. plastic scraper here. Uh, if you're going to use a razor blade, you really need to get the gasket off first because what you're going to end up doing, this is aluminum, and you're going to end up scouring the hell out of it. And then you may as well not have a gasket anyway. So, Okay, now that the solenoid's off, well, we need to start by taking off the operating and relief valves here on the bottom. I see the general rule of thumb. First of all, you're going to spill a bunch of stuff, but that's okay. It's a general rule of thumb. You want to make sure that you've got everything lined up so you can put it back together. Keep your workspace clean. simple magnet you can find in a lot of places is a good idea. It'll help you to get the little pieces out. Just, just a note, there are some lock tabs on here. Off camera, I had already uh, loosened those. Uh, what you want to do, or what I like doing anyway, it's something a little bit sharper, like a screwdriver. You can kind of get it in and 
get it started, uh, then from uh, that point get something with a blunt flat end and, and just tap it so that the lock tabs are out of the way. Uh, the reason you want to do that instead of just a screwdriver, and this, this works for inside engines in a number of places that you'll find the lock tabs, uh, you want to do that so that you don't get little shards of metal flying all over the place that you then can't find later. springs in here and you should be able to pull out the pistons you don't have to but the goal is to clean everything some of these parts put away and organized so that I don't lose them, and we'll press forward. See, this is going to be a challenge. So in here is the oil pump housing for the overdrive. It's the center plug. This is what we just took everything out of. There's a special tool to take this out. And the shape of this, it's basically a circle, but it's flat on two ends. Uh, so think of it kind of like a squished circle. And what you need is something to sort of pinch in and just unscrew it from there. Um, what would work great is a wrench, but you can't get a wrench on it because, of course, it's down to this pin. So you need a, a socket that will work in that way. And so I am going to attempt to make a tool because most of us don't have the appropriate Churchill tool to use for this. And if for whatever reason it doesn't work out, then I simply won't put this in the YouTube video. So let's get cracking, and if it doesn't work, no one will ever see this. First things first. This hole is roughly three quarters of an inch, and so you need something that's going to be a little bit smaller than that, uh, but not too much smaller. And I found this bolt uh, where up to the shoulder, it's about five eighths, but it's, it's larger than the piece that we're trying to remove, the oil pump uh, housing, but it's smaller than the three quarters of an inch. So my plan is to cut off the threaded section, make a slot in here, and then I should just be able to use this to twist it right out.
I'll be damned, it worked. That's basically it. I just used a file to cut a channel down the middle of it and didn't take very much force, so there you go. Now here the manual just says to pull out the pump. And I know that on an A-type it comes out through the bottom, this is a D-type, so kind of a tool you can fashion, again assuming this works, if it doesn't then I'm just going to delete this part of the video, you'll never know that I did this and fucked it up, but uh, basically just some washers, a bolt that happens to have the same thread as the bit that you just pulled out, oh, too much washer, that's okay, that's better. Pretty soon you'll have bottomed out, and when that happens, just double check that, yeah, it's as far as that'll go in. So, once you bottom out, you basically add more washers to the mix, and you go a little further. You can see this is working, but the process is aggravatingly slow. Okay, there is the oil pump body. Have it. The pump itself, notice one side is flat, that goes towards the inside of the gearbox, sorry, the overdrive, and then the spring, and that's what presses it back. Generally speaking, the oil pump is extremely reliable, it rarely goes out, and normally if you're having overdrive trouble, it has nothing to do with the pump. So. Now, this isn't a piece that usually is going to require replacement. You may not even have to take all this apart, but I figure I may as well go as deeply into this as I can so I can kind of show you guys how to do it. And like I've said in my other videos, it's not like I'm a super expert on this stuff. 
I just have a shop manual and a little bit of common sense. Take your time and you'll get there. So what happens with this pump, uh, I believe I explained earlier, this is what uh, gets the the fluid pressure to operate the overdrive right because it's it's hydraulic so uh, the hydraulic forces will will either force the clutch disc to move one way or it'll move back by the springs with the absence of uh, that pressure and this pump moves up and down and that's what does it and the thing that's forcing the pump up and down if you remember on the transmission you have this on the main shaft, this elliptical uh, cam, I guess. Uh, elliptical might be the wrong word, it's a cam. And it forces the oil pump down and then back up. So it's not moving very much, but it is moving very quickly. And that is what pumps up the pressure that you need to operate the overdrive. So you have it. All right, you can see that I've tilted the overdrive up. There is some uh, fluid spilling out, so. Uh, Watch out for that. And now we're going to, actually this is the wrong tool. Now we are going to, one at a time, loosen these bolts. On an A-type overdrive, uh, the J may be the same, but definitely in an A-type overdrive, when you remove the overdrive from the gearbox, the springs are on the outside of the overdrive and they will force it away from the gearbox. So there's actually two very long bolts. You have to undo those last, uh, kind of do the short ones first, and then it has time to stretch away. With this one, what I'm reading is that the springs are on the, well, I'm not reading, I saw it. The springs are on the inside. And so what you want to do is slowly undo these bolts so that you can remove the tail shaft without everything flying apart. No idea if that's true, but we're going to do it anyway, because it's not going to hurt anything. If you need a levering point, there's a couple spots where you can see where you can kind of get between the, the ring and the gear and the annulus, but in general it's not a great idea to lever. Casing separated from annulus. It's the bread and butter of the overdrive right here. We we'll have four of these springs. This is what pushes the two-sided clutch towards the back. Hydraulic pressure will force it the other direction. Okay, that's the brake ring. This is what the clutch presses against when it's towards the front. Not a whole lot left there. Oh, it is messy in there. Glad we took it apart. Okay. Uh, about the only other thing you can see, a little bit of thread coming through there. That's a vent that's on the top. It looks like all the ball bearings and everything are out. I mean, we could take this apart, but there's not really a need to. Okay. And that's the casing. the clutch with the planetary gears. There's your planetary gear set. And then to get this out, there is a circlip.
inside there, it's a single directional clutch. And much as I don't want to take that apart, it's possible that's still the thing that was making noise inside my gearbox. And so I feel like I need to because I really only want to do this once. So uh, we might wait for the next video to do that. I'm going to attack this. We'll clean everything up. Uh, we will make sure that we get a catalog of all the parts we need to order. And then we will go ahead and get started on it.